Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. i um, going to make a short video on a lecture of optimization. I had some technical problems, so hopefully this is going to work this time. I know it's not a great picture. Hopefully you can follow along in the notes or watch them separately. I know you guys will figure it out. And some students asked me if they should be sending me their work. No need to send me your work. Just, just do everything in your notebook or you can print out the sheets and, and do them there and just co collect all of them, bring them to class once we all meet again. Um, so it's really independent, just like the course is independent anyway, so it's up to you to just keep up. And I know you guys do great, and you're doing great already. There's no homework over spring break, so it's just three problems to do today, and that's it. If, if it comes closer to the final, um, we'll talk about that. Worst comes to worst, you'll have a take-home final. Okay, so let's do some, let's talk about um, optimization. So we've been doing the extreme value theorem and we've been finding the maximum and minimum of function on a closed interval. For example, okay, I'm going to actually go fast. I did this before and it um, kind of took a lot of time. So I'm just going to talk about the extreme value theorem. We talked about how if, you if you're a continuous function on a closed interval, then you're guaranteed a maximum and a minimum on that interval. And we saw sometimes it happens at the end points. Sometimes it's, it happens at the critical points. But we saw as long as you have a continuous function, that you can definitely find a max and min on a closed interval. But what if you don't have endpoints? What if this function goes on forever? Okay, then you're not guaranteed an absolute max or an absolute min. We're going to spend some time talking about, let's say I have a critical point. How can I tell if it's actually a max or a min or something else is going on there? We're going to spend some time the rest of the semester talking about how to figure that out. But for today, I just wanted you to try some word problems and um, see how you can use it maximizing and minimizing, uh, maximizing and minimizing um, strategies we've used so far um, to solve these problems. So with your problems, you're really just going to be finding, with these problems, you're just really just going to be finding the critical points and... Um, that's going to be where the max and min are. So these problems, you can assume, you can trust that there is an answer, uh, a unique answer. Okay. So I guess the point is that the, the difference between the extreme value theorem and just finding absolute max or min in general is that you don't have endpoints, so your only points where you might have a max or a min is the critical points, although it might not actually have a max or a min there. So just we're going to look at all these places where the derivative is zero or not to find uh, these are going to be like our flashing points list. No, there might be something going on there, but there might not be. We have, for example, the function x cubed. The derivative is 3x squared. The derivative is 0, 0. So there's something going on here, but it's not a max or a min. Okay. So critical points are alerting us that something might be going on. No, that's true. Let's try this Sorry, I'm just trying to make this uh, as short as possible, mostly because my computer, for some reason, isn't accepting the long videos. All right, so let's try a couple problems. Hopefully, you have, if you have the worksheet, um, that's great. Then you can read the problem. I'm going to do number one and number five on the worksheet, and if you could just please do numbers two, three, and four. The question is, find two positive numbers such that their product is 192, and the sum of the first plus three times the second is a minimum. Okay, when you read these problems, it's like, I have no idea, no idea where to start. That's good. Where you should start is, it's sort of like you're building your way to an equation that you can actually work with. We want to get to an equation, I can take the derivative of set it equal to zero. We're, we're heading there. So the first thing is, there's always the first step, and this is always where you have all the power, assign variables. So just pick letters for whatever is unknown in the problem. In this problem, it just says find two positive numbers. I guess those are my two unknowns. So you can call whatever you want. I'm just going to say x is the first number. So we're sort of like making notes to ourselves at this point. And y is the second number. So you can choose whatever letters you want. But you, ha you have to get the problem started, you have to choose some letters. Okay. And now try and write the information as an equation. Okay, so two numbers, two positive numbers, their product is 192. So let's see. The product is 192. That means that this equation must hold x times y is 182. Okay, already we, we, we're on our way to math, math land. And the second says the first plus three times, I better write that down. It says the, the first plus 
three times a second is some is is a minimum. Okay, so I don't exactly have a qu an equation here yet. I don't quite feel comfortable writing a like full equation, but I'll just say sum. And when you're reading these problems, look for the sentence that has the word maximum or minimum, greatest, or something like that. That's what we want to maximize or minimize. Okay, so this is what we're going to minimize. So the only problem is, I want to write this as a function of just x, right? Then I can take the derivative set equal to zero. Okay. So I'm going to use this, we're going to use this, we're going to solve for y. So we get y equals 192 over x. And then plug that into this equation here. So we get 3. Oh, sorry. Because we get the sum equals x plus 3y. But y is 192 over x. Right? We are so close. This is so good. Okay, so now I'm going to rewrite. I really want a real equation. It's, it's like you have these like steps, these progressive steps, like where like an evolution or something where you're not actually fully there yet. It hasn't fully been realized yet. Okay, so this is a, a, almost the equation we are going to be investigating. I just want to write this. Instead of someone write s, someone write s of x. So that shows me that this is really a function of x. Okay, x plus 576 over x. Okay, now, now we have a real equation. Okay, we can just do math now. I have an equation, a function, just of x. I can take the derivative and set equal to zero. Now it's just like the problems that we've been doing. Okay, so your job in, this, in these problems is to find the equation that you're going to work with. Okay. So let's do this. So I have s of x equals x plus 576 x to the minus one. So I, I try and write it in a way that makes it easiest on me to take a derivative. So I'm going to take a derivative. So I write, I write the function like this to take a derivative. Now that I found the derivative, you want to write it as one fraction, okay? I know everybody's like, what do I do next? Because I had some questions. Remember that the way to find the critical points of a function like this is to write as one fraction. So I write as one. First write positive exponents, right? Okay, so this is a fraction. Its denominator is x squared. So I want to give this guy an x squared denominator too, but I can't just violate math. I, do, I have to um, keep the equate, keep the this expression balanced, so I have to multiply the numerator by x squared as well. So now I can add the the numerator with the common denominator, and we get the derivative is x squared minus 576 over x squared. Okay, so now we're in a great position to find critical points. Set the numerator equal to zero, set the denominator equal to zero. The denominator doesn't actually give us any critical points. We get x equals zero. That's not the, that's not the solution. It's not in the domain of the function. So just set the numerator equal to zero. So we get x squared equals 576. So we get x equals 24. And so y is 192 over 24, so y is 8. Okay, so we found the derivative, so we didn't, I guess, technically verify that this is where the maximum happens. That's what I'm going to tell you, don't worry about that. There should just be one solution. Okay, so the solution here is x is 24, y is 8. All right, let's do one more call. Okay, I'm going to do number 5. Five. Suppose you had 102 meters of fencing. Better write that down. To make two side-by-side -side enclosures, uh, as shown, what is the maximum area you could enclose? Okay. Slight. It might be slightly vague the wording, but we have some kind of shape like this. Okay. I don't know where to start. How do I start this problem? Assign variables. You pick the letters. I pick the letters of what's unknown. So we're trying to figure out. I didn't finish the problem, did I? Um, what's the maximum area you could enclose? Okay, so we're trying to maximize area. Okay, so first, first start with letters. Okay, uh, letters. Okay, so I, I guess I could call this. Try to use as few letters as possible. X, X, X. 
These should all be the same if it's an actual shape, rectangular shape like this. And, it, and maybe it's not clear from the problem. These should all be the same uh, quantity. Okay, great. So now let's use the this. Let's take this. Take care of this information about the fencing. So when I add up all of these, I should get 102. So I have three x's. So three x plus four y. Okay, we're going to use that to solve for y. And now, what am I trying to maximize or minimize? All right, find the find the sentence that has the word in it. It says maximize the area. Okay, so for now, I'm going to write my pre-equation. Right? It's not exactly what I want yet. I can't get my hands on it yet. But I can. It's like pre-equation. So the area is length times width. So x times the length here, or width if you want to call it, is 2y. Okay, so this is like my pre-equation. We're almost there. This is what I want to maximize. Right? So I'm going to try and write this. I'm going to use this equation to solve for y, plug it into this equation, and then I've just got a regular function of x. I can find the derivative set equal to 0. So if you solve the, the fencing equation, or the perimeter equation, you get this. y is 102 minus 3x over 4. Plug it into the area equation, so now you get a real, a real function of x, x times 2y. OK, great. It's a little messy looking, but it's a real function. I can really do some math on this. Okay, so, so now from now on, all I have to do, really almost done, all I have to do is simplify this, take the derivative, set equal to zero, by the quick points, maybe find where the derivative is undefined. But I don't, I think we're fine here. So I have this function. I simplified it first, so I get 51 x minus 3 halves x squared. So take the derivative, 51 minus 3x, set the derivative equal to 0, so I get x equals 51 over 3. I'm going to plug that back into the function, the, the equation had y um, in terms of x, and you get y equals 51 over 4. But the equation, the, the, the problem is asking for the maximum area, so make sure. So we want to put the max area is x times 2y. So I got 433 0.5 meters squared. Okay, good luck, you guys. Send me emails if you have questions.